life science, we often represent brain function and structure on cortical surface models of the brain. And we do so because many features only make sense when you consider the actual geometry of the brain. For example, consider two points on opposite banks of a circle. Although these two points are close to one another if you consider the Euclidean distance, they are far apart if you consider the cortical distance. So in this project, we aim to build a geometric deep learning model that allows learning on cortical surface representations. Specifically, we did so to predict the functional organization of the visual cortex from underlying anatomy. The visual cortex is retinotopically organized. That means that adjacent points in the visual field or on the retina are matched by adjacent neurons in our brain. This retinotopic organization is characterized by two maps, the polar angle map and the eccentricity map, which is the distance to a fixation point placed at the center of the visual field. Here we can see how these maps overlap in our brain. And we can observe that the polar angle map runs roughly perpendicular to the eccentricity map. Many studies have shown that this retinotopic organization is similar across people, although considerable variability still exists. And this variability has been at least partially linked to variability in anatomical features, for example, the cortical coping pattern. So we aim to build a deep learning model capable of learning this complex relationship between the functional organization of the visual cortex and its underlying anatomical features. Here we have the polar angle maps and the eccentricity maps for one participant in the testing data set. For illustration purpose, we represented these maps on spherical surfaces because it would be easier to see the entire visual cortex. But it's important to note that we trained our model using a folded cortical surface that best resembled the geometry of the brain cortex. Here, the solid white lines represent isopolar angle lines, while the dashed white lines represent eccentricity lines. And those lines were drawn based on these empirical maps. Now we have the predicted polar angle map and the predicted eccentricity map for the same participant. We overlaid the, uh, the solid white grid and the dashed white grid at the same position. We can see that our model was able to predict the isopolar angle lines matching with the ground truth. And more generally, our model was able to predict the main features of polar angle maps and eccentricity maps. We noted great differences in polar angle maps across participants, particularly in the dorsal portion of the early visual cortex, as you can see in here, uh, represented by these gray lines. So we wondered whether our model would be able to predict this unique pattern. And as you can see here, our model was able to predict each of these unique patterns. Even this Y-shaped y representation of the lower vertical meridian, these yellow lines here. To further evaluate the performance of our model, we quantified the error and the individual variability. The error represents how accurate our predictions were. So in these images here, darker shades of red represent great errors. Based on that, we can see that the predictions occurred most from ground truth near the foveal confluence, at the most peripheral eccentricities, and in some higher order visual areas. The individual variability, on the other hand, represents how different an individual's map is to the rest of the group. So in this case, darker shades of blue represent a greater deviation from the group. We can see unique patterns here represented near or in the discontinuous regions that we saw before. If you are interested in our work, don't forget to check out our complete manuscript on BioArchive.